there are only a few guaranteed things in life. Your mortality, the fact that your neighbors will have a subwoofer that could rival 19th century bombs, and increasing car prices. It's true, affordable automobiles are hard to come by these days, though they do exist. So today, I'm going to show you some of my favorite budget options. For this video, I'm only going to consider vehicles that most people can actually buy. There are more value options out there than what I will list, though many of them are too hard to find or often carry a markup, which doesn't align with the point of today's video. Additionally, these are the cars I think offer great value and is not necessarily my favorites list. Let me know in the comments section if you want me to do this same sort of video on used cars as I got a whole lot to talk about there. Let's dive in. So first, under $20,000, a vast majority of brands don't offer anything. My strongest recommendation to the person with the skinniest new car budget would be the Nissan Versa. On the inside, it's a pretty comfortable car with easy to use controls, a healthy back seat, and some modern safety features like autonomous braking. While I have very limited experience driving this generation Versa, it generally receives pretty good remarks as a comfortable, sensible vehicle that is quite slow and boring, but at just 17 grand, can you really complain that much? Plus, you can still get it with a five-speed manual transmission in the base model, and Nissan supposedly has been working on fixing their CVTs. Time is going to have to tell on that front, though I think with regular maintenance, its running costs should be reasonable. If you can swing it, I'd advise spending 20 to 25 grand and picking one of these. For that price, you can get a Toyota Corolla, or if you find a dealership with a kind soul, you could pick up a Corolla Hybrid. The Corolla is pretty boring to drive, doesn't have a ginormous backseat, but it lives up to its reputation of being an extremely reliable car. They all come with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, they get great gas mileage. Though take notice, the Corolla Hybrid is a bit underpowered, as is the Hyundai Elantra, but that too is a nice option for this money. It doesn't carry the same reliable reputation, though it's more fun to drive, has a more swanky looking interior, and quite a bit of features too. The same thing could be said about the VW Jetta, which also offers a ton of space in the back seat with a caboose that could rival some small SUVs. And if you want an SUV, the one that I would recommend most in the $25,000 mark would be the Mazda CX-30. That's gonna come with standard all-wheel drive and a fair amount of other amenities with a shockingly premium interior for that price point. It's also more fun to drive than any of its competitors, it has more power, and it's relatively quiet too. In fact, I think of all of the vehicles here, that's the most impressive dollar for dollar, though there are some polarizing attributes like its chunky cladding, relatively tight back seat, and small windows. Now one vehicle I really wish I could put on this list would be the Ford Maverick. While I haven't gotten the chance to drive one of these, I've heard great things, and it's just a unique car on the market, especially in hybrid form. The problem is that Ford's not making near enough of these, despite it being the most affordable model in their lineup. You can still get these for MSRP, but typically that involves ordering them. And waiting for I don't know how long. Now, Chevy doesn't have the best history with making affordable and reliable cars, but the new Trax is an extremely attractive vehicle with good features for the money too. So if you're looking to lease something or you don't care about the possibility for higher running costs down the road, maybe consider one of those. As that's gonna be just, what, 22 grand after destination to start with? It's a steal. And as you open your budget up to 30 grand, there will be a lot more options. So here are some standouts that I've come across personally. One, the Mazda CX-5. So that too will have standard all-wheel drive. You can choose between an adequate 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four or a turbo version of that with immense passing power. Each are hooked up with a smooth shifting six-speed automatic. The steering has feedback to it. It's playful on the road. It's one of the only Mazda SUVs to come with independent rear suspension too, so it handles very well. It's not the most comfortable. The ride is a little bit firm, but it has a nice size cargo area, a high quality interior, and good features for the money as well. If you can live with a smaller back seat than average in that firm ride, I think you would love the CX-5. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more practical and appliance-like, the Subaru Forester also starts out below $30,000, and I would recommend checking one out. The seats are comfortable, you have insane visibility, the best all-wheel drive in the class. It handles well, it's forgiving on a bad road. It's a big box that can help you haul large furniture and canines. Though the powertrain can be a little soul-sucking, the infotainment is 
Eh. While it feels durable, the interior lacks premium touches, and there's not really an aspect about it outside of the wilderness trim that really gets your heart racing. A similar thing can be said about the Subaru Legacy, though that's going to be a little bit more quiet. It's a nice cruising vehicle, and you can get one in the premium trim for a chunk below 30 grand, and that's probably going to be the most comfortable car, period, that you can buy for that money. It's still practical, family-friendly, and feature-oriented at that price. Plus, Subaru is pretty good about making sure dealerships do not mark their vehicles above sticker. And if you're interested in buying your own, I'd like to recommend Royal on the East Side in Bloomington, Indiana, the friendly, knowledgeable dealership. And that's let me test drive multiple vehicles of many different brands that helps make videos like this possible. Check them out. Another family sedan that can easily be had for that twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range with plenty of features is the Kia K5 and Hyundai Sonata. I also think they're pretty good looking cars too, though that's something that I haven't had too much driving experience with myself. It's an option I would consider, plus this applies to any of the Kia Hyundai products. You do have some of the best warranties available in the car market to help offset any longevity concerns. Now let's get to the fun part of this video, the fun cars. So for Thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars. You have quite a few options. And my top pick when prioritizing value is the Subaru WRX. Okay, actually, for me, it would be the Honda Civic Si, but that is very hard to buy, especially at MSRP. So I don't even want to include that here. The Subaru WRX you can get for sticker all day, maybe even a little bit below, depending on where you are. It comes with two hundred seventy-one horsepower, all-wheel drive, a six-speed manual transmission, and while the steering or gearbox aren't super Super entertaining to operate, it's fairly easy to drive and feels confident on any type of road. It reacts quickly too, it's sharp. You can get a premium trim for 35 grand, though with any optional packages on top of that, it does start to lose its value proposition pretty quickly as you teeter into the $40,000 mark where it's going to compete with some better performance cars, but even there, a lot of its competitors don't have as comfortable of a ride or as big of a back seat, so it's hard to knock. There's also the feature-packed, efficient, entertaining entertaining and refined VW GTI that, in its base form, is plenty well-equipped. It makes 241 horsepower, but packs more low to mid-range grunt than the Subaru. The six-speed manual, which is in its last model year now, is a touch vague, but smooth. The seven-speed dual clutch is phenomenal, and I think the steering is tighter and more rewarding on a back road than the Subaru. It just gets pricey. But if you can live with a little bit less versatility, maybe consider a vehicle like the Hyundai Elantra N, which is going to be a better performance car. It's also going to be considerably harder to find, but a great option nonetheless. There's also, of course, the Mazda MX-5 Miata. That's something that actually can sell below MSRP because the demand isn't super high for a two-seat roadster. It writes the book on fun, is built well, it's reliable, and I've actually gotten the heaviest RF model to 60 in six seconds flat, so it's not too much of a slouch either. I think as a car enthusiast, at least once you are going to go through a Miata Curious phase that may even leave you as an owner for life. If you need more practicality or want a fixed roof, the Subaru BRZ, while scarce, typically isn't marked up like the Toyota GR86 and provides an agile yet forgiving driving experience that's nearly as entertaining as the Mazda but probably not as reliable. Chances are you may also go through a Mustang phase, like myself, which is another car that you can buy for under $35,000, specifically in EcoBoost form for 2023. Four. This is an engine that's also proven, makes over 300 horsepower. I haven't driven the latest generation, but from what I've heard, it's a pretty capable car. Maybe not as fun to drive as some would hope, but considering the handling, the engine, the relative comfort levels, it's a pretty good pick. And if you want to step your budget up to like $45,000, the GT is phenomenal. But most people aren't going to spend that kind of money on a vehicle just to toy around in. Instead, when people drop 40 grand, they're usually trying to cater to some large needs. So if you're really wanting a new vehicle for that price that's versatile, the best options I can think of, I mean, would be the Honda Pilot, but that's also hard to find at MSRP. So more realistically, the Subaru Ascent. Subaru's killing it here because they have good dealers. You can get a premium trim, which comes with plenty of features, 
For under $40,000, it's gonna have a great all-wheel drive system that can send well more than 50% of torque to the rear wheels. It's got a comfortable ride, comfortable seats, great visibility. And if you reallocate the space, you can fit someone that's six foot three in all three rows. While passing power is great, this does use a continuously variable transmission resulting in an appliance feel. While common issues dropped off after the first couple years of production, if you prioritize reliability and a traditional transmission over features and practicality, I'd steer you toward a Toyota Highlander L. The best option if you can live with front wheel drive is the Honda Odyssey. You'll have a V6 with VTEC. It really likes to be revved out, which I guess not very many people buying them will do that, but it also comes with a pretty natural feeling 10 speed automatic transmission. Way more practicality than any three row crossover. You can fit adults of my size in every single seat with no problem. You can also fit four by eight drywall sheets. You have power rear sliding doors as standard. Tech that's not exactly cutting edge, but an interior that's overall very easy to live with. It's comfortable. It's a little bit more fun to drive than most SUVs in the class. I'm a big van fan. I will add, despite the Honda badge, the Odyssey has had middling reliability, but it's not spooky enough to scare me out of recommending it. Though I suppose some people don't want the image of a minivan, and if you just can't take that, but you want maximum practicality, maybe spend a little bit more money and get something like a Toyota Grand Highlander, but then, I mean, we're talking the mid-40s. And if you're wondering about the Sienna, I would also recommend that if it wasn't so commonly marked up. In fact, I've driven past some dealerships and looked on the lot to find some of them to be over $65,000 because they're being marked up 10, 15 grand in some cases. Now, if you want the baller image of a luxury vehicle, there are still some options that you can get for under $40,000, like the Audi A3, which drives kind of like a soft GTI. It wouldn't be a stretch to label it as fun. It also has a really fresh looking cabin, some nice features, comfortable seats. If you can live with a tight back seat and limited cargo hauling capability, I think it's a great option. If you need some more practicality, there's also the Acura Integra, which I think is an awesome option with the six-speed manual transmission. It's really the best way to get the Civic Si if you can't get one of those at MSRP. It's spacious for the class. I was impressed with the interior in person, and while I haven't driven one yet, I've heard that it's fun and it's comfortable. I've also heard that it's a bit pokey, not too quiet on the highway, and if you skip the top spec trim with the manual, you're getting a CVT. There are a few runners up that I could list, but I'm more so curious what other value-minded cars you guys may think of. So let me know. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like to help me latch on to the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. Follow my Patreon for an additional podcast, and I'll catch you in the next one.